Good morning. My name is Ruth Campagna and I am with Faye Hollow Homestead. And today I am helping take care of a neighbor's farm because they are on vacation. Now they have a goat that needs to be milked twice a day and they have this handy dandy automatic milker um, that they like to use for her. So this is, this is the milker that we got right here. There's some hoses that get connected to it. And so I love taking care of other people's farms because um, it gives me experience with animals and uh, circumstances that I would not have access to unless I purchased those animals myself. And if you've been following my channel, you know that we are interested in getting goats at our farm. And my mother-in-law is not a huge fan of the idea of milking goats. But I do want to have that option. And so what I want to do uh, is get a good goat that will clear land, which is the main reason that we want a goat. And then have that breed be uh, a good dual purpose goat. So if we wanted to breed the goat and have milk, we could. Um, it's better to have it available to you than not have it available to you and need it, you know? So I've got the, the milker and this goat is very excited, I'm sure, to be milked. So if I were interested in having a homestead, which I am, or if I wanted to have, see if it was something that I wanted to do, I would most highly recommend kind of babysitting a farm one day or a few days in a row and then seeing how you like it. Uh, my husband and I did this. We took care of a homestead back before we had chickens uh, as kind of a, a dip our toes in the water type of thing and see if we wanted to even have chickens. I mean, it's a very romantic lifestyle, right? Like you read these books about it, you, you see these magazines, you can see videos on YouTube and they never really show you how hard of work it is Usually they just show the fun stuff. So it's a good idea to try it out yourself and see if it's something that you actually like because it is, it's a lot of work. I mean, milking a goat twice a day, that is a huge commitment. That is a huge commitment. So you can't, you can't run to the store in the morning until you milk the goats. If you're out doing errands during the day, you have to be back by a certain time. You can't get distracted. It's a big deal. So, there they are. That goat's getting ready to come in. I gotta make sure that we got grain in her bucket. So, here's the milking stall, or the... the milking contraption for her. And uh, so she jumps up on here on her own and then I just kind of lock the thing around her neck. Here's the milking machine. And so you just take this hose and connect it to that. You take this hose and connect it to that. Okay, so that's all hooked up. And I got the spray. Now we gotta go get that goat. So this is fun. We don't have any large animals on our homestead. We basically just have um, poultry 
And so having the opportunity to take care of some larger animals um, is really good. And the more that I do this, the more I just find that I, I love it. I really love milking the goat. Okay, sweetheart. Hop up. There we go. And this just closes like that. And then that locks in right there. And so she's got some delicious grains that she gets to eat right there. Makes it more enjoyable for her. And I don't know if you guys have ever been a mama, but when you are ready to feed your baby, it's, it's a good thing to be able to do that. So here we go. Sweetheart, you wanna come in? Okay, so my daughter is in here and she wants to help me milk the goat today. So what we're going to do is we turn this on and we're going to stick these, there you go, stick it right underneath. You're okay, you're okay. Yeah, but she's down. Yeah, she's, she's good. We'll just stick it right. There you go. Yep. Uh -huh. And let, just let it kind of, it'll, it'll suck in. Okay, can you hold this one? Okay. And that just kind of, kind of pull. You gotta, you gotta stick it under the nipple there. There you go. It'll just kind of pull it in. There you go. Let's make sure that that's in there nicely. And now we're milking. If you guys can see that milk coming in. It is so exciting. And she's got her grains. And she's letting go of all that pressure. This is a good situation. So another thing that I love about doing this is bringing my kids along so that they can kind of see what it's like to take care of all these animals because it's easy for them to say oh we really want goats or oh we really want rabbits or we want horses or whatever that is and then not really understand the work that goes behind that as well just like we adults do <laughs> and so uh, having them be part of this process gives them a good idea of what's in the whole uh, shebang is like what's entailed in having animals like this and so uh, this is actually really cool. Do you see, see how large that um, her, her area is that has the, the milk? Apparently the, there are different sizes because the, the baby goat only uh, nursed on one side for a while. And so one is larger than the other because it was trained to produce more. So. Um, but you'll see that the, it was so big that it's going to actually get to be a lot smaller and that's how you know when they're done. But um, uh, it gives them an idea of what is entailed in taking care of these animals. And they have said, no, we don't want to do something anymore after taking care of these animals or taking care of somebody, a friend's farm. So um, it's just really good. And then sometimes they're like, absolutely, I love this. This is what I want to do. So. Uh, I think that that's just really great and it's a good experience. Okay, so we are done milking her and you can kind of see it is a lot smaller now and and she's feeling a lot better now. She's still got a little bit of stuff in there that she's going to eat as her treat, so I'm going to let her do that. I think this is just such a great experience for her too to be able to be around these animals and see if this is something that she's passionate about. I think inside the soul of every girl, there's a love for horses. Now, I don't think we're ever going to get horses on our property. I just, it's not practical for the size of homestead that we have and, the, and uh, what we're trying to accomplish with our homestead. But it's nice to have neighbors that do have horses. Oh, and the other kids are inside because there are baby kittens here. So obviously they're gonna to wanna to be with the baby kittens, right? I kinda of wanna be with the baby kittens too. <laughs> okay. So she's done. Come on, 
and sweet honey. Is that yummy? Because we've been milking them, uh, they let us take home some of the milk that we that we have gathered from milking them, and uh, that's an experience as well. Like it's really amazing. You think of goat milk, goat cheese, and everything like that, and it has this really strong goat flavor. Uh, they have a male on this property as well, so it's not like it's just you know a girl goat, which has a big effect on the on the flavor, but. Um, Fresh goat milk, you can't even tell. Like, there's no there's no goaty taste when it's fresh. Come on, sweetheart. Let's do it. Let's go. There we go. Okay, come on out. And this baby goat right here, this is this is Myrtle. She's she's a couple of years old, actually. She's not quite a baby. She's just tiny. We had her at our property for a while, clearing off the uh, the side of the mountain, and that was also a good way of seeing if. Having a goat is something that we want to have on our property. And we just fell in love with her. The kids always want to come see Myrtle. When you, when you do your own milking, it's important that you filter the milk. Uh, and so they have these things and there's a filter. You just screw on the bottom. You're playing with the kittens. And you can just get one of these uh, large, half gallon and then you stick it over the jar <laughs> and then you take your milk and you just pour it through the filter and that one goat that they have um, it's been a while since they've had the baby uh, and she's still given half a gallon of milk every day which is really uh, in my book it seems like something that would be enough for for our family uh, she likes to make cheeses and and soaps that's what she does cheeses and soaps uh, with her goat milk and you can see I mean that's from one milking so later on today we'll we'll come back and we'll milk her and we'll fill up the rest of this jar there might be even more uh, we might have to get two jars but this is about a half gallon So that's, that's, that's a good amount of milk for, for a family. And so uh, that also is a good indicator to me of how many goats we'd like to have at a milking stage at one point. So it's just, it just adds to your knowledge and knowledge is power. Uh, when you are doing a homestead, uh, especially when you're dealing with animals, uh, it's really important that you know what you're getting yourself into because it's not just like a plant where if it dies, it's fine. This is an animal that we're talking about. And so you really wanna be able to take care of them the best way possible. And if you're not able to milk a goat twice a day or a cow or sheep, I guess, you can get sheep's milk, uh, you, shouldn't be, you shouldn't be breeding them and getting them to the milking stage. So um, this is good stuff. I really like it. Wasn't sure if I'd like it, I do. Um, I, we have never been a family that drinks pasteurized milk. Uh, even growing up, we didn't do that because uh, we just know that pasteurized milk is not good for you. Um, but fresh milk, yes. I will absolutely drink fresh milk straight from the animal. Uh, that is healthy for you. Um, there's been interesting studies where, you know, you cannot feed cats pasteurized milk. They will end up getting very sick. Um, it might not be that day, but in a in a gradual course of event, events, it will damage their health. But if you feed them fresh milk, um, they're fine and it keeps them healthy. So, um, I mean, there's a lot of studies like that, how pasteurized milk actually decreases the calcium in your bones. Yes, it adds, but in order to get the calcium to be the, the type of calcium your body can use, it actually takes calcium from your bones in order to convert it to usable calcium. So you end up losing more calcium than you're gaining so yes, you are getting calcium, but you're actually losing calcium. Uh, but fresh milk does not do that. So um, I wasn't aware of all the science behind this as I was growing up and I had some farmer friends. Uh, I especially had one friend who was a, a milker and they had hundreds of cows and I would go and I would help him milk often. Well, not often as I wanted to. Sometimes I would go help him milk, um, but 
uh, he was emphatic that milk is good for you. And looking back on it, you know, we would argue about this, but he was right. His milk was good for him because he was drinking it straight from the cow. I mean, like when he drank it, it was still warm. Um, and yeah, that's going to give you really strong bones. That's going to keep you really healthy. But uh, they never needed to have that pasteurized milk because they had a dairy farm. Um, when you drink the pasteurized milk, it is just not good. So um, anyway, the more you know, right? Okay, so they also have bunnies. And this bunny had babies, but the babies actually ended up dying. The bunny killed them. But we got... I know, right? They got a lot of animals. There's only four eggs. Guys, can you find a way to get that chicken back in the pen? Did you guys look around for duck eggs? Nope. There's one duck egg. Where will we put it? Go look around for some duck eggs, okay? Okay, there's another one too. Go get the other one. Got some helpers. There's bunnies over there too. We gotta refresh their water. Did you guys get it in? Excellent, okay. They got it in. Okay, now we gotta, we gotta make sure everybody's fed. We gotta feed chickens, we gotta feed rabbits, we gotta feed cats and dogs, we gotta feed kittens. Uh, they used to have pigs. So these waters, I mean, there's definitely water still in them, but you wanna change them every day just because uh, it gets old and stale. And, uh, and some of them sit in the sun for a while. Ruth, I'll help you. I just need you to carry it. Found some duck eggs. Oh, good. Duck eggs. You found the duck eggs? That's awesome. Ducks are really good at putting their eggs like literally anywhere that they want to. Not necessarily in the same spot every day. Here's the baby kittens we get to take care of. They are so cute. Mama Cat is around here too, but she's taking a break right now. Okay, so we got done with all this stuff here. Now we just gotta go out to the pasture, bring some food to Zeus the dog, who is, uh, coincidentally, he's the brother of our dog, Finn. So, be able to show him. He's like best friends running to greet each other. <laughs> hey guys. Hey. Here they come. wants to eat the camera. Hey Zeus! Here is Zeus. This is Finn's brother. <laughs> they they gave Zeus a trim. So he's less fuzzy than our, our Finn. But he is out living the life. Uh, Pyrenees are actually bred to protect sheep. And so... <laughs> He's living a happy life out here with the sheep herd. And he's getting his food. Yay, Zeus. <laughs> Get it? Yay, Zeus. <laughs> so this is us just taking care of a neighbor's farm. And if you get a chance to do this, I would highly recommend it. Uh, it is so much fun and it is so informative. <laughs> And it, it teaches us a lot as we're getting ready to do more stuff on our homestead. So it's a great idea. If you guys like this video, that'd be great. If you could put a comment down there about any ideas that you guys have for ways of getting better at homesteading before you actually have a homestead. Or if you guys have farmsteaded before, what was your experience? Did you like it? Uh, also, hit that notification bell, subscribe, all those wonderful things. I hope you guys have a great day and stay blessed.